Hi everyone, this video will demonstrate topical anesthetic placement. We place topical anesthetic prior to the local injection to make it more comfortable for the patient. Now, before we can jump into the skill, we have to understand some basic dental anatomy. To help demonstrate the anatomy, I do have some plastic skulls and we'll go over the maxillary anatomy first. Now this won't be very comprehensive, it's just meant as a review, so hopefully you understand some of the innervations on the teeth. So more of a review, if you've never had dental anatomy before, this can be a preview to study it a little more in depth. The doctor can numb several different ways. They can do an infiltration that will numb one or two teeth at a time, or they could do a block, which would numb an entire nerve trunk. With infiltrations, the anesthetic needs to travel through the bone in order to reach the nerve. The doctor will inject into the soft tissue of the vestibule apical to the tooth that's being worked on. Simple restorative procedures, the doctor injects directly above the tooth being worked on or near the apical region of the tooth that's receiving the work. When they place the anesthetic, it's a liquid, it will diffuse through the bone. It won't just numb a single tooth, not with the traditional local anesthetic delivery. There's other systems called single tooth anesthesia, that's a little different, but with the traditional injection, it will permeate and diffuse through the bone and it will knock out a couple of teeth. The PSA, posterior superior alveolar nerve, innervates third molars, second molars, and the distal buccal root and palatal root of the first molar. MSA, middle superior alveolar nerve, innervates the two premolars and the mesial buccal root of that first molar. ASA, anterior superior alveolar nerve, innervates the anterior teeth. For nerve blocks that the doctor may do on the maxilla, there are two common nerve blocks that happen. The nasopalatine nerve block. So the nasopalatine nerve comes out here through the incisive foramen. This provides innervation to the lingual sides of the anterior teeth. So if the doctor is doing a surgery, they would, or an extraction, they would numb both the ASA on the facial side and they would numb the nasal palatine nerve here to make it comfortable on the lingual surfaces. The other common nerve block that happens on the maxilla is the greater palatine nerve block. So the greater palatine nerve innervates or supplies sensation to the lingual posterior teeth. So if the doctor is performing surgery on any of these posterior teeth, they would numb the greater palatine nerve. Now there's a greater palatine nerve on each side, left side and right side. So it depends on what teeth are being worked on as to what area the doctor will numb. When it comes to injections for the nasal palatine nerve, the doctor injects very closely to this incisive foramen. 
So we would place topical on the incisive foramen. Well, on a real person, this would be covered with tissue, an incisive papilla, a little raised bump directly lingual to those central incisors. If the doctor is doing a infiltration on, let's say, tooth number 12, you would place topical, apical to tooth number 12 up here, right in that mucobuccal fold. Now, if the doctor is injecting for a greater palatine nerve block, Limitations for jaw opening, the doctor cannot inject directly near that foramen, the greater palatine foramen. What happens is the doctor injects closer to the first molar. Palatal side of the first molar is the injection spot and the needle inserts at an angle and travels under the soft tissue for the tip of the needle to get closer that greater palatine foramen. So when we place topical anesthetic for a greater palatine nerve block, you of course need to know if it's left side or right side, you would have the tooth number. And then you would place topical palatal to the first molar. So those are your common injections for maxillary teeth. And again, it depends on what procedure is being done. Invasive surgeries, you would do a block for the lingual side of the teeth, either nasal palatine, if you're working on anterior, or a greater palatine, if you're working on posterior. So this model can demonstrate the mucobuccal fold a little better because we have some soft tissue here. So if the doctor is working on tooth number two, infiltration, simple restor uh, restoration, restorative procedure, you would place topical right here, right where the, on the mannequin here, right where the pink meets the tan area. So that kind of represents the mucobuccal fold on a real person where the cheek mucosa comes and attaches to the attached gingiva, the oral mucosa. Looking at the palate here, the nasal palatine block would occur right here. It's a little raised area, incisive papilla, directly lingual to those two central incisors. The greater palatine block, so remember the Greater palatine foramen is back here, but your patient probably won't be able to open any more than this. So the doctor cannot inject straight up into or near that foramen. So the doctor has to inject at an angle. So they're going to insert palatal to that first molar and the needle will travel back under the soft tissue, closer to that foramen. For the mandibular injections, here I have a mandible. We have infiltrations and nerve blocks here as well. With infiltrations, because the mandible is much thicker than the maxilla, Infiltrations do not work well for posterior teeth. But where the bone is thinner in the anterior region, infiltrations can work on anterior teeth. So the doctor may do an infiltration for tooth number 24. 24 right here. That would be placed again in the mucobuccal fold, apical to that tooth. Now we have a right side and a left side as well for nerves. If the doctor does a nerve block, either a mental nerve block 
or an inferior alveolar nerve block, it stops, the effects stop at the midline. If the doctor does a inferior alveolar nerve block, the mandibular nerve enters the canal back here. So the doctor needs to get the anesthetic solution close to this foramen. It's protected by the lingula up here. What happens is the doctor will have to use a long anesthetic needle, needle a thicker gauge, so a lower number gauge. Remember, gauges work opposite of how you may think. The smaller the number, the thicker the diameter. And retromolar to where the doctor is injecting, you can feel an indentation on the jawbone and you can feel that in your own mouth. If you press retromolar, you can feel an indentation here. When we place topical, the doctor will inject just lingual to this indentation and the needle will travel through the soft tissue getting close to that foramen back here. So when we place topical, if the doctor is doing an inferior alveolar nerve block, doesn't matter what tooth they're doing the block for. The tooth can be any tooth on the side of the block. We have to place topical anesthetic back here. So when you place this, feel for that indentation and go just lingual to that. By knocking out this nerve, the sensation stops here. So anything further along the path will be numb up into the midline. So that would be for an inferior alveolar nerve block. For an incisive nerve block, and this is sometimes called a mental nerve block, the doctor injects close to the mental foramen. Again, there's a mental foramen on the left side as well as the right side. So of course we have to know what tooth we're working on. But the doctor injects near this foramen. The anesthetic solution will diffuse and permeate through that foramen and it can reach the premolars as well as the anterior teeth on that particular side. So if the doctor's working on premolars or anterior teeth, they could do a mental or incisive nerve block. Incisive nerve block, remember that incisive nerve stays inside the jawbone and travels towards the anterior teeth. The mental nerve comes out of the mental foramen and travels towards the chin. But the doctor injecting in this area will actually knock out both of those nerves. So for placement of topical anesthetic, if your doctor is doing an incisive nerve block, again, it depends on what tooth is called out, what side, you would place the topical anesthetic near that mental foramen. And a traditional landmark for that is it's located apical in between the two mandibular premolars for that side. So with the anatomy out of the way. We can go through the actual procedure. So showing those again on this type of model, the mental foramen is apical to the two premolars and that's relative to the side you're working on. So it would be here for this side and we're missing a premolar but that does not change the location and down here for the incisive nerve block. For infiltration, if the doctor chooses an infiltration of tooth number 25, you would be apical to that one tooth. Inferior alveolar nerve block would be retromolar on that particular side. Since we don't have a real anatomical jaw, We'll use this to simulate that curvature, and you would be lingual 
to this curve here for the actual procedure. As a dental assistant, we need to explain what we are doing to the patient before we start. And we have to choose our words carefully. We can't just go up to the patient and say, I'm going to numb your mouth. They will probably be expecting a needle. And a lot of patients are fearful of needles. Choose your words carefully. Tell the patient, I'm going to place a topical anesthetic that will numb the skin before the doctor gives you the injection. Show them what you're using. Check their medical history. Make sure they're not allergic to the ingredients. For the skill, dry the oral mucosa first. If you place topical anesthetic on wet tissue, it's just going to slide around. So dry the tissue first, then place your anesthetic, and then cover the tooth with gauze so moisture, saliva, won't wash the topical anesthetic away. So to perform the skill, you need gauze, you need a cotton applicator, and you need your anesthetic. When you open your anesthetic, take enough anesthetic to coat the cotton applicator. And you can set it down on a piece of gauze. Recap your anesthetic right away so it doesn't get contaminated. Never double dip. This is a jar that's meant for many, many uses. So if you do need more anesthetic, take a fresh cotton applicator. Based on the treatment plan, you will know what tooth is being worked on. For clarification, ask your doctor. For this demonstration, if we are doing an infiltration of number 11, so universal tooth numbers, number 11 is maxillary left canine. Explain what you're going to do to the patient. I'll be placing a topical anesthetic on your skin. This will help numb the area before the doctor gives the injection. Dry the area first. We've already dispensed our topical. Remove your gauze. Place your anesthetic. Try to keep the anesthetic right where the doctor will be doing the injection. This anesthetic needs to be in contact with the tissue and I like to put the gauze back over the top to prevent saliva from contaminating it and just washing it away. This particular anesthetic needs to stay in place for three to five minutes for it to work. There are other anesthetics on the market. There's profound topicals that work faster, that provide a deeper numbing sensation. But what I'm demonstrating with is a typical topical anesthetic. Remove it right before the doctor gives the injection. And you can wipe away the excess material. I know some assistants just take a big glob of this and just slather it all over. When you do that, yes, you're numbing the area, but it's also going to numb the throat. The saliva will wash it away. You've just delivered too much. And when the patient's throat is numb, they'll feel like they're choking and they could have a very uncomfortable dental experience when they feel like they're choking. This topical anesthetic wears off in about 10 minutes. It does not last too long. For my students who are watching this video, when you do your skill, I will give you a tooth number and the nerve. If I say greater palatine injection for tooth number four, locate tooth number four, greater palatine injection. Remember there's two greater palatine nerves. I have to select the appropriate 
side for tooth number four, do the same step. Dry the location, place your topical. So remember for greater palatine, you are palatal to the maxillary first molar. Three to five minutes this has to stay here. So for your skill, you won't know what nerve you get. You do have to demonstrate placement for all of them, but for the full procedure, the drying, the explanation to the patient, and the placement, that will be a random selection. If I say, let's do an incisive nerve block for number 22, locate that area, Explain to the patient, I'll be placing a topical anesthetic to numb your skin before the doctor does the injection. Dry, place, wait three to five minutes. So placing the anesthetic requires us to understand the nerve supply to the teeth. So hopefully this video has been helpful and you feel more confident in placing topical anesthetic. Thanks for watching.